You are not supposed to be here. Forget about all this. Uh, my name is David Spirer. I'm a programmer at Valve, and I'm project lead on Half-Life 2, Episode 2. Episode 2 is the middle episode of our episodic trilogy, which follows immediately after the events of Half-Life 2 and Episode 1. Gordon Freeman and Alex are trying to bring a data packet that they stole from the Citadel in Episode 1 to resistance scientists out in the wilderness, far away from City 17. Compared to Half-Life 2 and Episode 1, Episode 2 uh, introduces large, open, outdoor environments and sort of big, um, nonlinear combat experiences. We also introduce the Hunter, which is a fierce new adversary that goes after Gordon and Alex in the wilderness outside of City 17. It's pretty fierce. It uses these explosive plasma darts, so you really kind of want to get away from them as quickly as you can. It takes a lot to take them down, so you find yourself using nearly every weapon in your arsenal to bring them down. It's been three years since Half-Life 2 shipped, and PC technology has really moved forward quite a bit. And we're staying right on the cutting edge of, of that technology with Episode 2. We have a totally new particle system for the best special effects that we've ever shipped. It takes advantage of multiple cores. We've added a lot of new advanced shaders for Episode 2. We've made our lighting model much more correct than it was in Half-Life 2 and Episode 1, so our world looks better as a result, as well as a cinematic physics system, which lets us bring Hollywood-style destruction effects uh, to the episode. Fundamentally, the, the, the role of an episode two in any trilogy is to serve as a bridge between the introductory events of the first episode and the conclusion in the third episode. If you look at a lot of trilogies like the Star Wars trilogy, Empire really had a lot of meat to it and set up everything that happened in the conclusion. And the same with the Two Towers and the Lord of the Rings. And so episode two is, is that to the episodic trilogy. Without spoiling too much, they're going to learn more than they've ever learned before about the G-Man. They're going to meet a brand new character, Dr. Magnuson, and a major character will die in Episode 2. So all of these things really set the stage for what's going to happen in Episode 3. Episode 2 is considerably longer than Episode 1. 1 was about 4 to 6 hours, and Episode 2 is a solid 6 to 8 hours. Episode 1 took place entirely in the confines of City 17, and the style of gameplay was pretty uniform throughout. Episode 2 has a huge variety. There's a lot of on-foot experience. There's a lot of in-the-vehicle experience. We have indoor and outdoor fights, exploration, puzzles. Although it is smaller than Half-Life 2, it really has more of the epic feel that Half-Life 2 had. We wanted to bring people to large outdoor environments. We thought it would be fun to give people a cool ride to drive around in those big open spaces, and so we introduced the muscle car. The muscle car is a car that has a lot of sex appeal. Uh, we wanted a vehicle that, as soon as people saw it, they wanted to drive it. The PC, the PS3, and the Xbox 360, the content is completely the same. Um, we're currently planning to have commentary for um, Portal, Team Fortress, and um, uh, Episode 2. It's kind of like director's commentary on a DVD, but it's while you play the game that you can find points of interest and activate them and get a little story about how we designed that section of the game and what decisions we made and trade-offs we had to make in creating that part of the game. We got a lot of positive feedback from customers uh, when we did the commentary for episode one and so we feel like it's a fundamental feature that we want to include in all of our products going forward. Half-Life 2, episode two, is shipping as part of the orange box. Look for it this fall. <laughs>